And here's another story we've been following up for you. We have plenty of food. That is the declaration by the government as 1.1 million Kenyans face starvation in 13 counties. Devolution CS Eugene Wamalwa says there are more than 4 million bags of maize in the silos. And the only challenge now is the distribution. We're not yet where we were in 2017. And I want to add the Honorable Senators to allow the institutions, the experts to do their work. Okay. And once the experts tell us we are at the alarm stage now going to emergency. That's when the president will now come in as he did in 2017. For now, the counties have the capacity. As national government, we are complementing what the counties are doing in terms of food how, and water. How many people have died? So I can tell you, Hussein, as of tonight, there is no death that has been verified as a direct cause of this drought. In 2017, you where we had majority of our counties in the alarm stage, we had a situation in the entire Horn of Africa. Do you know in Kenya, we have a record international. And for the first time, we were actually uh, celebrated by the international community for the interventions we brought that no lives were lost in 2017 okay. when the drought was severe. Mm -hmm. But in the entire Horn of Africa, people, were lo people lost lives in Somalia, Djibouti, only Kenya because of the interventions we put in place. Okay. Today, as we speak, the drought that we have has not reached that stage yet. Also so no, no, 2017 was the worst. When we declared a national disaster, yeah. our food situation, our food security situation was serious. And that's why the international community had to come in. We had to import food from outside. As we speak, we have food in the country. Last year, for the first time, we had a bumper harvest. We were actually able to harvest over 42 million bags of maize. As we speak, in Gitale, I'm a neighbor to Turkana. Mm. Just a few kilometers away, our stores are full. NCPB stores are full. Farmers are going to plant. NCPB, as we speak, are in the process of buying 2 million more bags. In our strategic food result, we have almost 4 million bags. So on the same breath, we want to now talk to our reporter, Enoch Sikoli, who is joining us. Sikoli, who is joining us, rather, by way of phone. Um, Enoch, is good to be speaking to you. You're in Baringo. Could you tell us exactly where in Baringo you are and what you've been able to observe so far? Thank you, and uh, good morning. But here, uh, things are not so rosy. The situation is, is as bad as the pictures uh, you've been seeing coming out from uh, uh, different media outlets, uh, different uh, sources. The situation is as bad as you can imagine. Right now, I'm standing in a, in a dry uh, river bed. Here, they call it lager. And uh, what we can see is that... Um, the scorching sun is decimating, uh, depleting each and everything you can imagine of. The vegetation is going. What I can see right now here is that um, the dry river bed here are now what is becoming the source of water for some people here. They have to scoop the sand um, for meters down there so that they can get at least some drops of water um, for domestic use, some of them drinking. And here where we are, have a group of uh, women who are just come here, they're looking for water. That very important commodity is here is very rare now as we speak. And and the, the, it seems that the, uh, when you look at uh, the skies, there is no sign of a single cloud, um, just an indication that the rains might not be coming here anytime soon. And so the situation um, could even worsen uh, from how it looks right now. Reports here, different reports suggesting that uh, quite a number of people have died because of uh, of the drought and you see there is a lot of uh, dispute from the government and um, a push and pull between the government and local politicians here, including members of the county assembly, who maintain that the stories and the reports about death is actually true, that they can count numbers even up to 21 people who might have lost their lives. Um, that has been uh, disputed by uh, the, uh, the administration here, led by uh, the county commissioner who maintains that uh, he has not heard of any death from drought. But that is a dispute because at the end of the day uh, people don't die because of drought. They die because of the effect of drought. For example, starvation and diseases. And remember uh, the CEO of the National uh, Drought Management Authority 
own uh, uh, maintained that uh, the people died of diseases. So what remains to be uh, uh, established is whether the diseases are drought-related. Um, but, but that is an argument that has been there between the, the government and local politicians. But as we speak, the situation is not good here. Um, and residents are just living by the thread. Some of them are uh, saying that uh, actually what they're waiting for, they're waiting for donations. They're waiting for food. And where we are, it's a place called Koloa, uh, 110 kilometers from Marigat, which is 300 uh, kilometers away from the country's capital city. Now, yesterday, um, the cabinet secretary was in Marigat, which is 110 kilometers uh, from where I am right now. Residents here, they haven't seen they, they haven't seen anything close to food arrive here, um, and so they are only depending on uh, they are only depending on you know, wild foods and what they call mukoka here, so that they can at least push uh, for days. They can survive for days because. Uh, the, the hunger here, or the hunger banks here, um, you cannot imagine that situation. You cannot imagine what is happening in this area of, of Kenya. So quite a number of people being affected. I remember the statistics say that close to uh, or over 100,000 people in this constituency alone, not in Baringo County. Remember, Baringo County is vast, but the most affected constituency is the constituency called TRT. And here, uh, over 100,000 people, uh, from what we understand, um, are facing uh, starvation or are staring at starvation. Really. Sikolia, one, one last question. Have you seen any relief food or relief trucks heading that way? Because they, the food should have reached them by now. Uh, Trevor, as uh, I told you, uh, actually where I am right now, it's 110 kilometers from uh, uh, Abin on the road. The road is bumpy. The road, the terrain is just rough. But what I can say, I haven't seen any truck from the government or from any uh, organization that could suggest that food is being transferred from uh, Marigat uh, to this place. So I can confirm to you that, yes, uh, I haven't seen any of the trucks arrive here. Yeah. And residents actually are telling me they haven't seen even uh, something close to food arrive in this place. So what they are depending on are wild food. Uh, and the word that was in the coma, uh, All right. so that they can survive. Okay. Thanks, Enoch. That's Enoch Sikolia speaking to us on phone from Kolua in Baringo. He's summing up the situation as as bad as the pictures you've seen. And we were showing you some of the pictures there earlier on. It's a bad situation there. The government says everything is under control and it's not at critical stage just yet.